Hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. Today's topic is one that um, I think I haven't really talked about is the polygamy pain. Um, and finding joy for it um, so people do find joy and you'll be talking to a couple uh, Fabian, Nicola and Chris they are in a relationship and they'll be telling us about their relationship and how they're making it work how it all got started they have a beautiful baby as well they'll be telling us about how their son fits into all of this what made them actually come out and start telling the world about this their relationship status we live in a world where everyone is meant to fit into a box, but they decided to fit outside this box and make whatever their relationship status they believe it is, they decided to make it work. I'm super excited to hear their own version of their story and hear their reasons why they choose this is the best work method for them and their, their, their families together as a family. Meet Nicola. Fabian and Chris, as they share their story about the polygamy relationship. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Um, as I said in my introduction, I have the amazing couples here and they'll be telling us about their relationship. I want you to meet Chris, Nicole and Fabian. How are you guys? We are awesome. <laughs> <Great>. Thank <laughs> you for the invitation. <laughs> oh, no, you're absolutely welcome. I'm so glad you actually said yes, because um, I think what you have to share with the world is so important, in, especially in times like these, where a lot of relationships are being questioned. A lot of people are questioning their relationship, but never bold enough to come out and say, this is what I want to do. I want to feel freely. But before we get started into all of this, can you tell me a little bit about each one of you? Who are you? Well, well, I'll start with, uh, I'm Christian, I'm uh, going to be 33, 33 this year, and yeah, and I work in IT, I'm a software developer, and yeah, <laughs> and a father. <laughs> yeah, I'm Nicole, I'm 34, um, I'm a mother, and I, I'm together with them too. <laughs> So I'm uh, Fabian, I'm still 29, turning 30 very soon, and uh, yeah, I'm a, like a business economist, and uh, I love music and make music, and by the way, one thing about Christian, he's very good at drawing, he's, uh, he's a drawing artist. Really? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's good to know, I always, we're always fascinated with people who could draw, because I think it's an unusual talent, because I can't even scribble, let alone draw something, so it's nice to know. Um, Nicole, I'll have to turn to you. You know, you are leading this. Normally we see it the reverse way. We see a man and two women, but this is totally unusual. You know, how did this come about? What happened? Tell me your story. Um, yeah, it was a coincidence actually. Um, when I met Christian, I, I was talking about relationships and um, I told him that um, I always think that um, relationships don't have to be one way. And um, he told me that before me, he had only one relationship. And um, I, at, I asked him, do you think that you will miss something one day? Because when we would be the end game, would it be enough for you um, to ha have had only two girlfriends before me? Uh, like, and he said, yeah, it would be enough, but um, uh, what would be the other options? And we were talking about like uh, open relationships. And um, for me, it was like, okay, let's try it. Well, um, actually, I offered that to all my ex-boyfriends always because I was like thinking about this world and thinking about the divorce rates and uh, asking myself, why uh, are people cheating? Why are they not honest about their desires and that's what i told him and christian and i were agreed that we want to try an open relationship mm -hmm. and yeah then um yeah it was rather a sexual thing to be honest like um it was always only about sex we didn't know 
enough about polyam polyamory and then um, I realized that the sexual thing, this is nothing for me. It's like, uh, I don't want to meet any strangers or anything. And uh, yeah, then I told Christian that there's only one exception uh, for me, um, but this is our best friend. And I told him about Fabian that uh, I feel um, that this could be something that I could meet. And Christian was like, okay, I feel even better if you meet Fabian than strangers because then I feel safe and secure I know this person and yeah we were best friends all together so uh, from friendship it was it got into more <laughs> Christian, Christian on your part was there any kind of jealousy um um on your part when you see that when you saw Fabian because I mean you said you've never um, done it um had the open relationship and when Nicole came with this idea, what, what, what was going through your mind? Yeah, um, jealousy, of course, jealousy always exists. It's a valid uh, feeling you can have. And it's something new. Uh, it was something new for me. I never had something open. And of course, there's always a little bit jealousy um, because uh, someone um, strange in yeah. this part comes into your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> or someone, yeah. And yeah, but um, it uh, wasn't that big of a deal because I knew Fabian already after oh, okay. um, we, got, we got friends before, we were yeah. friends before. And with the open relationship, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Oh, wow. And, and uh, Nico, when, when I come back to you, and, and I know Fabian, I, have to, I would get to you, but I just really want to know, how long were you guys in a relationship? Um, you know, Chris and Nicole, how long were you guys in a relationship before you started thinking, okay, probably we should start in thinking about this? Oh, it was pretty quick. Um, we started to talk about uh, open relationships, I think like two weeks after we got together because, um, uh, yeah, we were really honest to each other. Mm -hmm. and, and we started our open relationship pretty quick. And then Polly and Murray was like five years ago. That was, yeah, when we've been together five years. So we are now about 10 years together. So um, Christian and I, and Fabian is with us uh, since five years about. Four, five years. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So Fabian, <laughs> you joined the picture. Was it, was it um, awkward for you when you started this relationship with, um, with the two, um, with the couple where you were like, when uh, Nicole said to you, okay, um, I'm thinking of this, would you want mind joining us? Well, how did you feel? So uh, it's quite difficult to say because we never had this uh, official talk, you know, like, do you want to join our relationship? This never happened. It was, um, <laughs> everything was very fluent, uh, especially uh, when I finished my studies in my hometown and wanted to go into a uh, big city to enjoy the big city life they invited me here to cologne to their place that you can crash on our couch um you can get on your feet uh, get a job and stuff get a flat because it was very difficult like to get a flat here oh. and yeah that was the plan and, uh, and then i stayed we we just we, we changed the part and but we stick together <laughs> mm, okay and in the beginning, it was like, um, it was very interesting because uh, you, you, you had something like best friends and family, something like a relationship, but it was just friends with benefits. And on the other hand, you had some uh, single life. So it was, everything was mashing up and we weren't thinking so much about it at the beginning. Uh, no, we realized later when he moved in uh, with us, actually Christian and I were planning our wedding. So this was like, <laughs> totally out of our minds that something like that could exist he was helping us uh, preparing for the wedding yeah. and um, it was only uh, meant temporarily that he moves in and that's why it didn't come to our mind we were so um, busy preparing this wedding and uh, doing guest lists and everything and after the wedding Christian and I were like talking because he started to go on dates and we we're like okay what if he meets somebody and moves out, then we will miss him. And we realized, okay, we both realized the same time it's we have to talk to him. What can 
uh, this be and we realize that there are emotions and that we are family so yeah. <laughs> you know the question I, I think everyone would want to know is that how would you sustain a relationship like this who is in control is it a relationship of you have um you know because i'm originally i'm originally from africa and in africa when we do it is that you everything is equal in this kind of relationship in your relationship i see you guys are very friendly and loving and i love this about you guys it's, <laughs> thank you i really must compliment this is that you guys seem so loving so kind to each other they do the way you look and the way you speak to each other and I'm, i really applaud this but how does it work sexually <laughs> Are you with both them? Are you guys free some? What is it? Because people might ask how, even if someone's thinking of doing this, what, what do they do? <laughs> yeah, we, we get this question often. <laughs> it's funny, as soon as you, you're three people, people start asking, so how's the, the sex thing going? If you're two people, oh, how do you meet? <laughs> you're so nice together. So um, <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah, it's actually, uh, so Christian and I, uh, I can I can go here. Uh, I'm not bisexual in this case. We are more like uh, bi romantic. We found out someone told us that this is a thing. I and like it, guys. Take note, bi romantic. <laughs> okay. Because like we have kind of feelings for each other, and it's more than friendship because we live in this whole relationship together, but we're not uh, sexually attracted to each other. Um, so yeah, but um, yeah, we we all um, are together in one relationship. So in uh, polyamory, you you're uh, comparing like V structures and triad structures that all um, people are together. And in V structures, I would be like the middle one, and they two wouldn't be wouldn't have a connection. Just imagine dots that you can connect. Yeah. So it's not a bisexual kind of relationship. It's a Oh, no, I get it. So you, both of you, you have Nicole, you sleep with Chris and you sleep with Fabian, but they don't, the two of them don't sleep together. Yeah. So uh, one exception, of course, when we all are uh, together. together. So <laughs> this is a, a sexual exception, um, but they don't directly have something with each other. So this is... Uh, oh, well, if the, they do, would there be any kind of jealousy if they the two of them do something together would you feel any kind of jealousy uh i don't think so no, <laughs> no? rather relieved that she gets some time on her own <laughs> <laughs> this is very few in our relationship we can like we are so much how do you say people people and we can uh, sit together and spend so much time together especially during corona everyone here is in home office oh. and then we are very happy if we just can get half an hour or an hour of time for ourselves so Okay. <laughs> wow. but yeah, no, because I think it's it's very nice the way you explained it because I think that's what one one of the way way um, people get confused. They'll think to themselves, "Oh, is it a bisexual relationship where tonight, oh, it's you I'm going to sleep with, or oh, tonight, oh, you, you know that kind of threesome." But I like the way you explained it. So, do you have days and say to, to um, four days a week I'll spend with Chris, three days a week, no, or is it just um, tell me. No, we are, we are all sleeping in one bed together, so uh, uh, there's not uh, this dividing um, part that many polyamorous yeah. Um, yeah relationships have. We always sleep in one bed together, and we, yeah, of course, after Corona, maybe we will go on dates separately. But this is also a practical thing because one can look after the baby, and two can go on a date. <laughs> But also the men, uh, Christian and Fabian, want to do, go on dates also and go to the cinema. So this is like um, something we all have as a benefit from being with three people. Yeah, we <laughs> no, really when, when you mean go on dates, sorry, um, Fabian, you were saying something, go on. Yeah, about the next day, uh, Christian and me, we're really looking forward to see the next James Bond movie <laughs> when it comes to cinemas at some day. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've been waiting for this James Bond movie for so long now. Yes. <laughs> but when you mean go on dates, you don't mean dating other people, right? You mean just you two going out and having fun, going to a restaurant, having a chill out moment, just, you know. You yes, mean, we used to go on dates with other people. So um, we even we're aiming after a number four we're thinking about uh, getting a bigger family but um 
when we started to talk about the family and starting to talk about kids, then uh, we realized, okay, um, it's not so easy to uh, find a number four because it's a big coincidence that two people find this love and uh, three people finding this love is really huge. And yeah, then we started to talk about family and how this can work with two guys and one woman because uh, that's a little bit harder to uh, find solution and um, yeah, yeah, accept. When you, yeah, like, when you get children, everything gets more real and more official and you have to think about how can we uh yeah integrate ourselves into society with yes. this uh alternative family yeah and that's why we and when uh, when we were talking about um our baby we were we knew we want to close our relationship because yeah dating takes time getting to know somebody get, takes time and it's always producing some kind of chaos and um, that's what we realized that at the moment uh, we are closed because uh, we want to have more time for our baby yeah. but we don't know if he gets bigger if we open up again and say like let's date again because yeah that's when what you really say when yeah? you say dates are you guys looking for a guy or female just um, you know, are you looking to just be the only, you know, only lady in the in the in the mix, or are you looking <laughs> to <laughs> incorporate a lover, another female to your mix? Um, yeah, actually, we would. I think uh, we were. Uh, it's not really gender based, but rather a female because I'm kind of jealous what they have. I want <laughs> to have a best friend <laughs> here too. They are sharing clothes and everything, so this is so cool. <laughs> and I think I would appreciate another female here too because, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> a man world here <laughs> with our son also. <laughs> No, that'd be interesting. I think uh, having a lover female to in, in, improve the mix and you guys could share your own and they could do their thing. You guys could go, you, you and the female could go on dates. Yeah, that'd be very interesting mix. And I, I, I feel where you're coming from because you now have a baby, things are slightly different and you have to um, think about the baby. In regard to society, you know, so we live in a world where it, we people are judged by, just by the way you look, let alone by your relationship. How have you been able to deal with um, the negative and the pressures of the world? You know, I would love I'll all of you to answer this question because, you know, it's a serious, serious issue. And, and I mean, the world is not friendly. It's not kind, especially when you have kids now. When you have to take your kid to school and you tell them on the, on the certificates, it's all free. That I need to put as, uh, as um, two daddy and one mommy. How do you deal with that? I think the most important thing is that uh, we have a very strong relationship and we are there for each other. So no matter what happens outside, you know, here we have our safe space uh, where we are uh, caring for each other and um, yeah, giving us strength. Uh, strength yeah. yeah, and I think what was our secret at the beginning was that we were like, um, saying okay uh, no matter what happens we don't know if this lasts forever let's just enjoy the moment enjoy the love embrace the love and we were so focusing on the love that we had that we um, yeah stopped thinking about society and then um, only when it became really serious uh, we started to talk about it like we talked about it with uh, our best friends before that but um, like family and everything um, and maybe the job and our society mm -hmm. this was not our problem at the moment because we were like okay we have so much love here let's just enjoy it first because yeah. you never know how long a relationship will last and normally when you have a relationship you don't tell your parents right away yeah. or introduce them to your new uh, girlfriend or boyfriend um, you first enjoy the relationship and see where it's going and that's what we did so yeah this was a little bit of a trick yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about the whole thing and the negative pressure from outside world chris how are you taking it now, uh, yeah, now we are sometimes worried when it comes to our son, because um, we heard about parents that told us that uh, other parents said like, oh, my kids cannot play with your kids because uh, you have three parents and you are perverts or something like that. 
And of course, when we think about our son growing up and he would come home and say, oh, I cannot go on this birthday party, that would break our hearts. This is like really hurtful when you hear stories like that. Yeah. But that's why we, uh, how we deal with it is actually going to public even more and showing even more that we are a normal family and loving family and our son is happy. And no parents have to worry when we're throwing a big birthday party for him and kids come, can come over to play and uh, yeah, they're fine here, you know? Yeah, that's why we are going so much public to just show the world we are normal, we uh, just a normal family. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that I think honestly, I think that's really important to, you know, show the world that you know we love we love each other as much as a normal couple will not. What you feel as normal couple will love themselves. We do that here. We don't. <laughs> we're not. We're not freaks. We're not perverts. We're just people who have a different sexual desires than other people does. So uh, you know, in going forward to the future, what are your plans for the future for your love and relationship? Because I really, you know, admire what you guys have, and I appreciate that you are so open about it. What is the plan for the future? Uh, yeah, uh, get the vaccination first, and then enjoy some date nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and maybe yeah, we are thinking, of course, of a si for, uh, sibling for our son that he gets some. A buddy to play with <laughs> and yeah then we are uh, mostly fighting for for rights that we can maybe one day get married or write all the parents on the birth certificate so this is something what we are planning now <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw that you did put this um the real father on the birth certificate was i mean on you don't tell the world which of the chris or fabio who is the daddy why is that? Why did you choose to not disclose that? Um, because um, I think it's uh, something that society has to learn that um, genes don't matter. We have so many patchwork families, everything. And this is something um, maybe also to protect uh, polyamorous uh, families with two women. There they cannot uh, hide um, who's the mother because uh, one is always pregnant and you can see who is pregnant and but also um, we get so many messages for, from uh, mothers that say okay people just say this is the mom because she was pregnant and I'm mom too and that's hurtful for polyamorous people and I don't want anybody to tell my uh, children oh this is your real father or this is your real father because uh, our children should uh, know they are all real we are all real parents because we love them and we commit to it and um, maybe society has to learn that first and that's why maybe some people are like oh you're making such a big deal out of it just tell or uh, i can guess or something and we are like okay you know but uh, guessing is um yeah offending to us because this is like that's not your deal. That's the deal of our family. And if our son will want to know, we can tell him. Like we are the parents and we tell him, but that's not the deal of society. Like you can maybe ask between best friends uh, when you're really, really excited, but it's not publicly, doesn't have to know everybody. <laughs> I like that response. I, I, I like the way you said we have to, you know, protect him because we, it, it happens in a lovely environment and we want to keep it that way we don't we, we don't I, I love the way you don't determine your life from what society think about it or what how society believes that this is the way your life should be and where are you guys joining me from I forgot to even ask at the beginning where are you joining me from what part of the world <laughs> we are from Germany Cologne Cologne city <laughs> it's uh, uh, yeah the biggest city here in the western part and it's also very very known uh, for his tolerance so we have a very big lgbtqia plus scene here we have a lot of bars with the rainbow color flags outside and yeah we have a very big carnival here <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the one day yeah so it's almost like the big carnival you see in the rest of the world so yeah. you, uh, you guys also live in an environment that actually makes it a lot easier for you well, yeah. I am super excited that you got to tell me, um, talk to me about this whole um, 
poly, poly, polygamous uh, relationship. It's so, so <laughs> difficult to say the word. <laughs> I'm so glad that you talked to me. And, you know, for the rest of the world, because you live in a very civilized world, for the rest of the world, what's your message of hope? Um, yeah. <laughs> message of hope. Yeah. Um, for your relationship, um, your kind of relationship. What's your message of hope? We hope that it will be normalized that everybody can love uh, whoever they want and how many they want, and that uh, people just um, uh, love the way other people love. Because seeing love is so beautiful, and uh, no matter uh, what the person uh, is about, which gender or uh, yeah, if love is love <laughs> that's the message <laughs> yes, yes yes no i i agree is there any urge at all any time to go out and cheat on this fabulous relationship you have do you guys any of you ever have the urge to go out and explore more and cheat on one of you guys now cheating is not part of polyamory so it's always about honesty and consent mm -hmm. um so but uh, if one of us would have the desire, this is a safe space where everybody can talk about. That's the beauty about uh, polyamorous relationships. You don't have to be secret about it. You can tell. And then uh, the family is like uh, talking like, okay, uh, does that work for us, for our family? And uh, yeah, you can get your consent if you want to. But cheating is uh, also not part of uh, polyamory. It's always ethical. Oh. <laughs> Well, Chris, Nicole, and Fabian, I really appreciate your time. I, I know I see the love here and I really appreciate you coming out and, you know, helping others because so many people cannot do what you're doing. And I wish your beautiful boy every success with this relationship. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's a delight. Thank you.